Back to follow-up segment tonight, Private Chelsea Manning, who used to be Bradley Manning, is serving 35 years at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, convicted of multiple charges under the Espionage Act. Manning leaked hundreds of thousands of documents to WikiLeaks, some of which put people in physical danger in places like Afghanistan and Iraq. Yesterday, the president commuted Manning's sentence. The sentence that she received was uh, very disproportional, di disproportionate relative to what uh, other leakers had received. Uh, and that uh, she had served a significant amount of time, that it made sense to commute. President Private Manning will be released in a few months. And joining us now from Washington, Senator John McCain. So, your reaction uh, to the commutation? Rage, uh, frustration, and sorrow. Sorrow for the families of those individuals who are identified in these leaks in Afghanistan that the Taliban went after and murdered. And uh, rage because this president is, is basically uh, endorsing a, a proposal that allows someone to go free who's responsible for the needless deaths of those people who are allies. What do you say to their families, Bill? How do you know, how do you know that uh, Manning's leaks directly led to a person's death? Did you get reports that they... I they got reports of yeah. that, that the Taliban went after the people that they were identified in these reports. And by the way, why wouldn't they? Sure. I mean, I just want to know if there were specific leaks that... Uh, came to you as a, as a senator, which showed that what WikiLeaks did with Manning's help uh, killed people in, in, that were helping the USA. Now, uh, let, me, let me be specific. That they, uh, the information I received when I was there was that the Taliban went after these people. I assume killed them. Okay. Now, uh, I guess uh, Manning has served seven years, something like that, uh, and then President Obama says, well, that's enough. I mean, that's commiserate with what she did. Well, of course, that's outrageous. Um, to w what is more egregious than uh, providing the enemy with information that would help them, which over time then puts the lives of the men and women serving in uniform in greater danger? And is there any argument that anyone could have that WikiLeaks didn't do that? So you believe that uh, the president is misguided in his sympathies here. Do you think it has anything to do with uh, the private being transgender? I, d I have no idea what the motivation is. Uh, I understand that there was a lot of people who were uh, arguing for this commutation, but uh, I, d I, d I can't expect, I would expect any commander in chief before commuting the sentence of someone of this nature would consult with our military leaders. Well, you think that he called up the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Ash said, hey, Carter didn't what do you think it. about this? You know, his own yeah. Secretary of Defense said don't do it. So he did nor consult, did but he nor didn't did any of our, right. Nor did any of our military right. leaders. Friday, Trump becomes president. You and he have a strained relationship. Have you spoken with him since he won the election? I've spoken to him twice, and both times it was about appointments. Um, and by the way, I have very good and strong relationship with the vice president-elect, with General Mattis, with General Kelly, with General Flynn. There's a lot of people around the vice president-elect, as I mentioned. And so I've been uh, talking with them a lot, Reince Priebus as well, about appointments. Uh, we just got legislation passed today so that we can confirm General Mattis as Secretary of Defense uh, right after the inauguration, immediately the same day. So we've been working some areas together. Okay. Uh, the big difference between uh, you and Donald Trump at this point is Russia. Um, do you feel you're going to be able to convince him to take a harder line against Putin? I certainly hope others around him uh, can. I know how General Mattis feels. I know how General Flynn feels. I know how even uh, Mr. Tillerson feels, uh, look, we cannot reward misbehavior. We have to go back to Ronald Reagan, peace through strength, get strong, and then deal with them. And uh, that way is the only way we can get So if he attention. lifts sanctions, if Trump lifts sanctions, you're not going to be real pleased? I'm going to be 
deeply, deeply disappointed. And by the way, so are all the people in the Baltic countries and in Ukraine and in Georgia that right now are under, under the threat of military action by Vladimir Putin. Okay, finally, uh, the boycott is not extended to the Senate. Um, there are Congress people, as you know, dozens of them that are Democrats not showing up to the inauguration. But the Senate has held. Why is that? Why aren't the senators, the Democratic senators, some of them far left, why aren't they boy boycotting? Well, I say with typical Senate snobbery, we are not like them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, the, I think they're, it's very clear. they're the school kids, you're the uh, professors, right? Yeah, I, I, th I think that uh, they have smaller constituencies and more narrow constituencies. Uh, my colleagues, some, in some cases, represent millions of people, and so. Uh, I think they are respecting the peaceful transition of power, which sure. has characterized the most successful experiment in democracy in history. All right. Senator, we always appreciate it. Thanks very much.